Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 Blueprints creation series. And in today's episode, we're going to be showing you how you can create a simple little timer for your match. So with your game mode, we're going to be showing you how to create a timer that counts up from zero and goes up and up to display the length that the match has been going on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly show you a simple little example from the game that I'm working on at the moment. So once it loads up, I confirm my customization and stuff. You can see at the top of my screen here, I've got a little uh, number that shows me the minutes and the seconds the game has actually gone on for and for as long as I'm alive and I'm playing that time is actually going to go up every single second. Now doing something like this is actually uh, slightly more complicated than one might think. Um, that's mostly because uh, there isn't actually a variable uh, for this, especially in, min in uh, minutes and seconds, so we actually have to do all of the maths every single second to calculate this, and that's exactly what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. Anyway, so without further ado, let's go ahead and have a quick look at this timer code so we can see exactly what we've got going on. So inside of the game mode, this is where I'm going to hold all of the timer information, and I've essentially just got uh, two variables for this. seconds and minutes and basically what we're doing here is every every frame it waits a second and then it sets the seconds to plus one so it adds a second every second basically and then after that it goes ahead and checks whether or not it's greater than 60 and if it is greater than 60 it sets the minutes to plus one and then it also sets the seconds back down to zero. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how you can do this. So I'm going to open up the project that we've been working on throughout the tutorial series, and we're going to show you how to do it. I'm also going to show you how to get this all displayed on the UI at a later date as well. So the first thing I'm going to I'm going to do is find my game mode uh, blueprint. So for those for most of you, it's going to be in a different place. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and modify the third person game mode or whatever project you're working on. It doesn't really matter too much either uh, where you store this timer code as long as you can actually access it. The reason I put it in the game mode is because, you know, I know it's always going to be running and I know it's really easy to access too. So let's start off with the first thing. The first thing is going to be using uh, an event to actually do something. And we're just going to use every frame. But we're going to put a delay on this to actually uh, show you exactly, you know, so it only goes once every second. So let's just go ahead and type in delay. If it will work, right click, delay, and then we're just going to hook it up and we're going to set the delay duration to one second. And we also need to create a couple of variables. The first one for seconds and the second one is going to be minutes. So I'm going to set this to seconds and I'm also going to create another one for minutes. And we also need to make sure that both of these are actually, um, you know, integers. Because by default they're going to be booleans and that's only true or false. Integers just allow us to work with whole numbers really easily. So we're just going to go ahead and change it to that. So just go ahead and change it to integer for both of those. And just set that, there we go. And then just compile it and just double check that the default value for both of those is zero. So by default, as soon as the match starts, there's zero minutes and there's zero seconds. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and do the next thing. We're just going to go ahead and set the seconds to plus one. So we need to add one more onto that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use the uh, maths, one of the maths functions for adding on a, you know, on adding on another integer. So if you haven't actually seen like my variables and uh, maths video, I advise that you go ahead and check that out using the thumbnail in the top left hand corner. But anyway, without further ado, let's just go ahead and do this. So integer. Oops. It sucks that I can't spell integer here. I'm trying to uh, type it all from an angle while using my monitor. So integer, and then I'm just going to do plus integer. So we're just going to be using this to set one uh, plus one to the existing value every second. So get the value for that and hook it up. Make sure this is at one, so we actually see that you know it is one second. Anyway, so let's just go ahead and do a quick print string in here just so we can actually see um, if the seconds are going up one by one just to make sure that this is all working. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a reference to print uh, to seconds here I'm just going to hook this up to the print string. We're going to delete this all in a moment but we just want to check that it all works. So if you look in the top left hand corner now you can see it changes the number every second by itself. But the problem with this is it doesn't show us minutes and it's going to keep going up and up and up past 60. 
When it comes to minutes, there's only 60 seconds in each minute, so we're going to make sure we accommodate for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this, and after we add the one second to it, we're going to do some conditioning. And this conditioning is simply going to be to uh, check whether or not it's greater than 60. And if it is greater than 60, we're going to uh, set the minutes to plus 1, and then we're going to set the seconds back down to 0. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're just going to type in here, greater than. And we're going to make sure it's greater than for an integer. So get a reference to seconds. And then the second value under here should be 60, because that's what we'd want it to be greater than. You know, if it is greater than that, that's when we're going to do all the stuff. So the next thing we need to do is set the minutes to plus one. And this is where it all starts to fall into place. So we're just going to hook this up, set, and then minutes. And then we're just going to do the same thing as we did over here, where we just do integer plus integer. So go ahead and do that. Integer plus integer. And then just go ahead and drag it in just like that. And by default, it's already plus one anyway, so we're just going to work with that. And lastly, we also need to set the seconds back down to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Set, seconds, and then we're just going to set this to zero. We don't need to do any integer plus integer or any, any of that. We can just use the value in here and it will set it all down for us. So if we wanted to, we could go ahead and print string and test this is all working. But I'm just going to quickly show you how to get this onto the HUD. So let's go ahead and do that. If you haven't got a HUD class or you haven't got a custom HUD, I advise that you go ahead and check out my UI videos. Uh, you can check out the thumbnails for that and, you'll get, and it will get you all sorted. Anyway, so let's go ahead and open up our HUD widget if you have one. I'm just going to find this. I think it might be this one. I've got so many, you know, so many things in here. I'm just going to double check, but you should know exactly where yours is. So this seems to look like it. So what we need to do is we need to add the text onto this little widget and we need to make sure that it actually, um, you know, is bound to the variables for seconds and minutes. And because we've got two different variables, it's best to actually work with more than one text block. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in two text blocks, one for minutes and one for seconds. And as for binding the content, all we've got to do is go to content text and then just do a binding function. It's quite simple really, so all we gotta do is just press create binding and then we get this and all we gotta do is cast to wherever it's stored, for me that's gonna be the third person game mode and then under object wildcard just hook that up to get game mode, there you are, and then using this uh, communication link here that we've got we can now get a reference to the minutes, so get minutes and then we're just going to pretty much convert that to a string and it should display for us. So let's just go and have a look. Uh, if we go ahead and press play now, you can see the value for that is zero. And I've got to go ahead and do the same thing for this one now, but we've got to bind it to the seconds. So same thing again, cast to wherever it's stored. For me, that's going to be third person game mode. Object wildcard, once again, get game mode. And lastly, just get a reference to seconds. Seconds. There you are, and print and just convert it to a string. Simple as that. And now it should all be displayed on the screen. You can see the seconds going up. And if you wanted to, you know, wait, you can see it's going to be 60 seconds. It's going to reset down to zero. Now, if you wanted to, you could also add in another text block for the little two dots that you have, the semicolons, um, and it will look all great. But that's pretty much everything for making a basic match timer inside of Blueprints. Um, if you actually check out... Um, my next video that's actually going to be showing you how to create a countdown timer so when it gets down to zero you know we're going to set a pre-made time and when it gets down to zero we're going to end the game anyway hopefully you've learned something really cool from this episode uh so thanks for watching comment like and subscribe and i will see you next time goodbye <laughs>